Um, real estate agents, this video is for you. And this video is for any aspiring entrepreneur that's looking to get into the real estate game. You have to know the difference between a bad, a good, and great deal in real estate. And for the life of me, I get calls all the time about real estate deals from real estate agents, and they don't even know what a good deal is or a bad deal is. And they just expecting that just because I'm an investor, I should buy it just because, oh, I want to add the property. There is quantifiable things that needs to happen for a deal to be great for a buyer of real estate, especially in the investment realm, than just, you know, a mom and pop person that's trying to move into a house. With all that being said, we're going to go through this video. We're going to pull up a deal and we're going to show you how it's bad and then how it can turn into a great deal um, in a matter of adjustments and tweaks from the list price and a couple other avenues. With all that being said, Alex, take it away. Guys, welcome back to the Pass Money Plan. Uh, my name is Alex. That is Kirby. And we're going to dive right into what Kirby's got for us. All right. So I'm going to share my screen here. All right. So look, so this deal here, this is for eight units for $859,000. All right. The subtitle title thing is going to screw with me. But all right, here we go. Anyway, but um, so for $859,000 and actually, uh, a real estate agent actually sent it to me and I blacked out the address because I didn't want everybody, you know, just look on, looking at the property over and over and over again. But this is actually on Zillow. All right. So with that, and I'm going to go over this conversation I had with a real estate agent, but I just put it in a PowerPoint. But this is what I said in the process. All right. So in this property itself, the sale price is eight fifty nine. dollars So the estimated mortgage on a monthly basis is about $5,624. Dollars. That's you know based on the list price of five eighty nine, twenty five percent down payment of two fourteen, thirty year fix because it's two fourplexes. It's not eight units combined. It's two fourplexes, so you don't need a commercial loan for this. And we just using an interest rate of around seven percent. Property taxes, property taxes uh, on this is going to run about roughly almost ten thousand dollars a year in property taxes. And the reason why I know because I actually have two other fourplexes in this area. Homeowner's insurance is going to run about $600 a month because homeowner insurance is around, around that uh, $4,000 a year mark for homeowner's insurance for one duplex. So we just did two. And then so again, for a monthly payment of 5,624 bucks, just roughly. But so, in the description on this deal, there's eight units, and the eight units, the monthly rent is $700 a month. That's $5,600 a month. So off the jump, this mortgage or this rent that they're paying doesn't even cover the mortgage payment. Just right off the top. It doesn't cover. So already off the gun, you already know it's a bad deal. It'll be what some people call an alligator or cash flow negative property. And then... For me, I'm not managing the properties myself. So I have a property manager. The property management fee will be around 8%. So that's another $488 a month. And then add in the vacancy rate because rental properties don't stay rented 365, you know, 365 every day, every hour. It is vacancy. It is turnover. It is different things. So add in a 3% vacancy rate. That's another $168. You add in maintenance. These units will have issues no matter what. So you add in that vacancy of 10%, that's another $560 a month. So if you add that to the total, the problem is the mortgage is $560, uh, $5,624. And then you minus subtract all those different things, the 448, the 168, the 560. So the money that's going to go in the account from the property manager is $4,384, which is less than the mortgage payment. So what that comes out to is negative $1,240 a month or around $15,000 a year negative that as an investor, if I bought this property at that rate, I will receive. Alice, you got anything on that? Nope, that's a terrible deal. So it's it's a bad deal. But this real estate agent been trying to push it, push it down my throat saying, oh, it's a good deal. It's a good deal. And I'm saying, no, it's not. So then you go on, how do I make this a great deal? 
All right. So the sale price is at eight fifty, you know, eight fifty nine. But what they will have to do is bring this price down to like five sixty, five sixty six ten. But this is what will happen. All right. So let's just use the one percent rule. The one percent rule is the rent is fifty six hundred dollars a month. If the deal was five hundred sixty thousand, five hundred sixty thousand, the mortgage payments will be three thirty uh thirty three hundred and seventy eight bucks a month. All these numbers for property taxes and uh home insurance, all that. Wait, no, it's been adjusted some. Hold on one second. Well, and the numbers on the side is it's the same. So let's go with this same thing. So now. All right, with all the with all the numbers, the four the four thousand three hundred eighty four going to going to my account, it would cover the mortgage four thousand three hundred and eighty four. Going to that, it would cover the mortgage. See that? Or so it's about a thousand bucks. And then the four thirty eight. So now I'm going for a thousand dollar profit per month, or twelve hundred twelve thousand dollars a year in profit. So now that's that's the difference. It'll be about, about $12,000 a year profit. So that makes it a good deal. All right. And the reason why, and the reason why I say it make it a great deal is this. It'll make it a great deal because like I said, I already own four plexes in the area. This is not my job to tell the real estate agent what the market rents are. The market rents in that area is about $950. But again, I'm not paying the agent or the seller the eight fifty nine based on the work that I'm have to do because once I raise those rents from seven hundred to nine fifty, that's going to be work turnover and everything that I have to do. I don't pay a seller for what work that I have to do. So with that being said, if I can get that deal down to maybe six hundred six fifty and then go in there and work and raise the rates, that turns into a good deal. And then that's what I was explaining at the bottom of this PowerPoint. The reason why it is because I know what the market rents are in areas between nine fifty and a thousand dollars. So that monthly rate or that monthly rent, well, instead of being, you know, fifty six hundred dollars a month, is really around eight thousand dollars a month. But if it's eight thousand dollars a month, and then my mortgage cost is four thousand, and then you add in, you know, the other expenses, property management fee, turnover fee, maintenance fee, vacancy rate, and things like that, I'm still Cash flowing somewhere around twenty eight hundred dollars a month on this deal. Twenty eight hundred dollars a month. Of course, I went to a private school. I mean, public school. I didn't go to private school. I went to a public school. So twenty eight hundred dollars times twelve. That's around thirty three thousand six hundred dollars in cash flow. And then if I could get this property for six hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, six hundred fifty thousand. You know, one hundred and twenty. Well, twenty five percent down. Twenty five percent down. That's around give or take. All on this PowerPoint thing in my face. So divide that by what I got to put down on it. About two hundred and fifteen thousand. That's about a fifteen point six, a fifteen point six cash on cash return. So did I confuse you there, or was that too much? No, no, it makes sense. Yeah. And then so I had this conversation with the real estate agent just to let them know. But of course, I X'd out the bottom part. I didn't mention that I know what the rents are in the area. And then I just explained to them why the property selling at that price point with the description of $700 a month per unit. And you want to sell it at $859 is not a good deal for me as a buyer. If it me as a buyer, I want to buy cash flow properties day one. It has to cash flow day one. I don't want to hear about what I can do to increase the value and all that stuff. I want to hear what did you do to increase the value? So did you go increase rents? Did you go deal with turnover and all that stuff? And then once you deal with turnover and rehab the properties and all that, and then raise the rent, then now if you got $900 a month in rent and you want to sell it for eight, you know, 850 or something like that, that's fine. But I'm not paying 850 based on what I have to do to get that. So in a deal like that, I will pay anywhere, like I said, 560 to you know 650, especially in an environment where the interest rates are you know still high. 
Uh, now, if the interest rates come down, then my numbers would change a little bit. But those are the numbers in the matrix that investors look at. It's about cash flowing day one. Uh, I'm tired of real estate agents in, in Florida. That's a big, a big thing is they want to tell you, hey, if you buy this at an outrageous price that don't make sense. All right. You're already paying an outrageous price that don't make sense. Then if you go spend more money, more time, more effort and do all these other things that's going to cost you more money. Then you could raise the rent, which tenants are going to move out because the rents are raised and you're going to have to have that carrying cost for tenants being gone. Oh, then the deal will make sense. That's really what they're trying to say. Yeah, that's a mess. I mean, I remember that one property I had showed you a while back where uh, they wanted 400000 and the rents were only collecting 1500 And uh, I think you just said, you know, there's, you know, they have the right to ask what they want as a seller, but some people are just crazy with the prices that they want. And but the thing is, is uh, if you're looking at you in your area, I mean, no matter where you're at, you're looking in your buy vibes. Like Florida, for instance, Florida is notorious for this, notorious for jacking up the price and telling people, oh, it's below market rent. OK, well, you sell it for as is below market rent, because one thing's for sure, two things for certain. When I buy that property, unless this tenant's on a month to month and still on a month to month in Florida, you got to give them 60 days to move out. I have to honor whatever lease they're on. So I have to carry this negative cash flow property for whatever, for however long this tenant's in there. So that's already losing money there, carrying the property. And then if I have to raise the rent so it's cash flow neutral or cash flow positive for myself, the tenant, it'll be maybe the increase is too much. The tenant might move out. So now I have the carrying costs instead of bringing in that little bit of rent that I was bringing that was keeping me cash flow negative. Now I have to bring in no rent on top of the tenant moving out. Then I might have to deal with eviction fees and stuff like that. Then once the tenant moves out, I have to remodel and turn the unit, which will cost more money to place other tenants in. And as a real estate investor, the biggest cost, the biggest cost on real estate investors is turning properties. When a tenant moves out and you have to get it back rent ready for the next tenant, that is the biggest cost for real estate investors. So these real estate agents going out there, signing up these deals, they're not telling the seller it makes no sense. Only thing they're looking at is, oh, how much commission I can make if this deal goes through? How about having a conversation and saying, this deal don't make sense. If you really want to sell the property, this deal don't make sense. But if you don't want to sell the property, then you can put it up there for whatever number you want to. And this property that I just showed you, it's been on the market for almost 200 days on market because the deal don't make sense. And I explained that to the real estate agent, but we'll see what happens. We'll see if they come back with the something that makes sense. But that's, that's really what's going on. And if real estate agents, you're wondering why properties are not selling, in your area, yeah, the interest rate have uh, a factor in it, but the deal that you're presenting out there, it makes no sense to somebody that's trying to buy it on an investment level. Now, on an occupy level, it may make sense to them if they're crazy enough to pay that price, but for investors, it makes no sense at all. Yeah, and I mean, considering the turnover rate that you'd have to pay, um, if you did pay that eight fifty nine, not only would you be at that loss, but then the turnover after that for raising the rents, then you'd be, you know, you'd be paying what over nine hundred thousand for the property in reality. Yeah. And I'm not saying all the tenants will move out, but it's eight units, I maybe 50% of stay, 50% of go. And that's really what it is. And those five units don't know how how bad they are on the inside. You know, you're looking at five to eight thousand dollars per unit. So let's just say four units at five thousand, that's twenty. You know, and just depending on how bad it is, if you're spending it. And I just and I actually I just had a turnover in one of those units in that area, uh, let's say two months ago, and it was bad, and I spent about five thousand dollars to turn the unit. And, but mind you, this was the same property that I just did, uh, built from scratch. And so the tenant was in there maybe a year, two years. They did damage, but just imagine that this property hasn't been rehabbed. And then 
all this extra stuff. And again, you have to make it look better than where it was at to, you know, command, you know, market rents to get to that level. Right, right. Well, guys, with all that being said, if you have any questions or comments, let us know down below. Hit the like button, subscribe button. Don't forget to share and we'll see you guys in the next video.